the Hay Gears Ultracraft Reflex RS. Let's give it a review. Biff, pow, zap, clunk, clunk, ouchie. Hey guys. Okay, it's me. So we know that I'm going to gripe about something in a minute, but I want to be controversial from the off by saying this. Resin printing is now getting much, much easier. If you've absolutely zero knowledge about 3D resin printing, but you want to jump in there, I have two suggestions for you. The first is to watch my video that strives to give you this knowledge and take you from novice to finished print. My second suggestion is to get the Hay Gears Ultracraft Reflex RS, because it really does make printing super easy. It's a mid-range printer with a max build height of 230mm. It's an interesting looking machine, which perhaps lacks the sleek styling of its competitors. But don't be fooled by this. On the front right hand side of the base are the power point, power switch and USB port. All conveniently placed together. And this so often isn't the case on other printers that I've reviewed. Not only that, it seems there's a micro SD card slot, like we typically see on an FDM printer. And perhaps this is a clever way to overcome the FAT32 file size restrictions associated with USB drives. But if nothing else, it gives us another option for transferring files. There are a few things going on at the rear of the printer, but these are optional extras that you can buy, and so don't really fall under the remit of this video. There's a flip top lid, allowing ample access within, and look at this. No flimsy plastic pivots here. These are proper metal hinges, which is great to see. At the very top of the printer, hidden beneath this removable foam, is a slot to accommodate a resin cartridge, which we'll cover more in a moment. The build plate is hefty solid metal, which curiously has the corners missing. And if you've spotted these four holes here and are worrying about them, don't. It makes absolutely no difference to the prints. The resin tray is unusually shaped. Still metal and strong, it has a clear NFEP, prominent markings, fixing bolts that don't fall off and get eaten by the dog, and a wide and well thought out pouring spout. There's also this protrusion that's part of the resin feeding system. The tray locates easily and the never lose bolts tighten it neatly in place. The Z-arm rides smoothly on widely spaced dual linear rails and the plate clamps in place via this lever. And this is really quite a soft motion. You might expect a metallic clunking and a spring-loaded feel, but this lever is soft, smooth and easy to push down. And yet it holds the plate very firmly. The interior also has this soft lighting inside which I feel is more aesthetic than purposeful and unfortunately cannot be turned on or off. The screen is a bit of a disappointment. It's a 10.38K monochrome, which gives us 29.7 microns of XY resolution. But this seems to be the approach of Hay Gears. Don't look for the latest screens in their machines. They're not racing to have the newest tech, Instead, it seems they're striving to get the best out of what's known to work well. The menu screen is large, fantastically clear, unlike my blurry footage, I'm sorry to say, and it's super easy to use. Just watch this user interface. Okay, it wants to know my language and where I am in the world. Now it wants my Wi-Fi connection, and so, yes, obviously, the Reflex RS has Wi-Fi compatibility, and whilst this is not strictly necessary to use, it's very much worth connecting to your LAN, much more so than other Wi-Fi compatible printers that I've used. Now I've already done this, so... Here it's asking me to bind to the Slicer software, and we'll come back to that in a moment, so I'll skip. And look at that, it's telling me it's got adjustable feet and I should take my time leveling the printer. Nice. Now it wants me to peel away the protective covers and if you haven't guessed by now, 
the UI is clearly and easily taking me through the setup process. And whilst this may be nothing amazing, for a newcomer to printing, it's invaluable advice. And frankly, I think this is something we should see on every single printer. The build plate should come pre-leveled, but to a small extent, it doesn't really matter with the Reflex RS, which levels itself up to a maximum gap of 240 microns. And that's what it's doing here. Anything more than a 240 micron gap means that manual adjustment will be needed. But don't panic, I'll come to that in a moment. Once again, we are seeing it being done by the measurement of tiny forces applied to the plate. A very exciting concept with great potential scope. In fact, at the end of a print, you can view a little graph of these forces across the plate during the printing process. I know it means nothing to me either, but there are clever people out there right now who are being very impressed by this. And after that, it's telling me to add resin and get started. The only thing I didn't like about the UI is that there doesn't appear to be a way of manually moving the build plate. And whilst I know that's a feature shared by Creality and some other printers, it's not one that I personally like. But this is an updatable fix, I would imagine, and I've already passed on my feelings about this to Hay Gears. Amongst the peripherals were a metal scraper to help remove the prints from the plate, and a funky looking spatula for mixing and removing excess resin. At this point, I typically reach for a USB stick to download the user manual and get started, but there certainly wasn't one in my box. There was a paper manual, which is something that we're seeing less of these days. Now you could and probably should read this, or you can let me save you some time. Instead, head over to the Hay Gears website and download their slicer. It's called Blueprint Studio, and if you're going to use a Hay Gears printer, this will be your world. Once downloaded and opened, you can bind the slicer and printer together. After that, the slicer will begin insulting the printer by accusing it of being idle. Through Blueprint Studio, or in fact via the printer itself, if it's Wi-Fi connected, you can search for and download any software updates. Now, I'm not going to cover all the features and uses of this slicer, but it's enough to say that it is nice and easy to use. To begin printing, resin is obviously needed and there's two approaches you can take. The first is the usual pour-in method. The second is to purchase resin in an auto-feed cartridge. Simply insert this into the top slot and resin begins to trickle down into the tray. The filling process is not exactly an intelligent method and as such it isn't controlled via the user interface. Instead, it's an internal probe or floating valve that detects the resin level and eventually cuts off. It's a basic method, but it does work. However, I think for an auto-feed system, it does overfill, topping up for me at least at roughly 900 milliliters. Whilst this won't actually overflow, imagine for example that there's a print failure and you need to empty and clean the tank. With 900 milliliters inside, that's going to be tricky and an easy spill waiting to happen. I'd prefer to see it level off at say 300 milliliters and top up during use, something that I've already shared with Hay Gears. When it comes to resin settings, that bit that really scares everybody when it comes to resin printing, there are none. Yes, you heard me correctly, none. Let me walk you briefly through a typical print. From the dashboard, select Slicer and add a new project. Select your printer. Now choose if you have any additional modules, which I don't. Here I have to select an application for which there's only one, which is general purpose. So I guess that's telling us that in the future, there may be other options. Now I get to select which resin to use, which for me is this one. Though Hay Gears have a range of resins for various applications, so do your own research there. Scrolling down a bit, we need to select a layer thickness, and currently there's only one at 50 microns. 
The experimental icon suggests that other thicknesses will follow, and I certainly hope they will, as I like to print at 30 microns for extra detail. I confirm my options, and then I'm in the slicer proper. And this is good, and this is bad. It's bad, because this is the only slicer you have. Hay Gears is not compatible with Lychee, Cheetu Box, etc. It's blueprint or nothing. But it's good, because actually, it's quite an impressive package. You can still slice with other slicers and save your files as supported SDLs, like I have here, or you can use the blueprint slicer itself. Now, I haven't tested this extensively, and really, that's a separate video in its own right. But watch this. If you click this one click slice button, it tells me that it will repair, orientate, support, and slice the file. And sure enough, it does, very quickly, which I think is excellent. You can elect to manually add supports in the usual sort of way, but that will take you much, much longer. And in my admittedly limited tests, the one-click version has done beautifully. At that point, the slices are prepared and ready for file transfer to the printer. Now, this is where I do have another gripe. It's very easy to send the sliced files to your printer via your PC, but you cannot start the printing process without manually visiting the printer and clicking Go. Now, I think this is a bit daft, and I've told Hey Gears as such. Luckily, they're already on the case, and apparently this will be fixed in a future update. Did you notice I never once entered any resin settings? That's because the slicer already knows them. And again, this is good news and bad news. It's bad news because you can only use Hay Gears resin. So if you have a favorite alternative brand, right now you cannot use it with the Reflex RS. And there's no way to manually adjust settings. So if you think it's a little underexposed or overexposed, tough, you've got to live with it. But in truth, I found it pretty spot on. But the good news here is that Hay Gears have all their resin settings plugged automatically into their slicer, so you never have to worry about these tricky numbers again. Furthermore, Hay Gears inform me that they're searching for partners amongst third-party resin brands, so you may well see other compatible brands popping up in the slicer. And the reason why there's no settings, and the reason Hay Gears are own brand exclusive, is that to make printing this easy, resins must pass stringent tests, including photoreactivity, curing performance, age stability, and moisture resistance. These apparent restrictions may put some users off, but I guarantee others will leap for joy at a consumer-grade printer that takes all the guesswork out of resin printing. One last super useful feature of the slicer is the help section. Remember I mentioned that it might be necessary to manually adjust the build plate? Well, don't worry, there's a video on that topic. Yes, rather than have to search the internet, Hay Gears provide an excellent range of very helpful video tutorials, all conveniently located within Blueprint Studio. Now, before printing, I should mention that the Reflex RS does not come with a heater, but a separate heating module can be purchased if required. As I didn't have one, and as it's pretty chilly in my workshop right now, I found that there was plenty of room inside to fit my G2 Systems heater. So how does it print? Well, using my usual test prints, I have to say I'm both surprised and impressed. I genuinely didn't expect it to print so crisply on an 8K screen. For me, these are nice prints that should satisfy most people's needs. I will say at this point, because someone always asks, that I didn't find it any faster or any slower than other typical mid-range printers. Even under the macro lens, it's apparent that the anti-aliasing does have an impact. And in the hand, those layer lines are quite tricky to see, 
while still being nice and crisp. Now there is a setting within the slicer called fuzz, which is supposed to really smooth things out. And from what I can see, that's not really doing anything other than cancel out the anti-aliasing. But it's possible that that's a function for a specific application, so I'll be generous and not mention that any further. So what do I think of the Haygears Reflex RS? Well, it's hard not to be very impressed by this printer. There are restrictions, that's for sure, like being stuck with a brand-only slicer and brand-only resin. But hay gears are in talk with other resin companies, so that may change. And the slicer does have some very nifty features, like the one-click button. You can't manually adjust resin profile settings, but that's part and parcel of having stricter quality control on the resin, hay gears tell me. And this really is a massive boon for many users that do not want to worry about what numbers to plug in. I would prefer to see a bigger screen than an 8K in a mid-range printer, especially as there are competitors out there with 16K machines right now. But in terms of printing, I think the stricter control over resin quality and the no alter settings policy pays off, as these are very crisp, clean prints that look excellent in the hand. In terms of price, Hay Gears are not making claims about being a budget printer, though they are affordable enough to still be at the consumer end of the market. And if you're interested in purchasing one of these printers, there's a link in the description that will take you straight there. And, full disclosure, it is an affiliate link, so if you use it, your old mate Vogman may get a few pennies. But more importantly, Hay Gears tell me, if you use that link, you'll get $50 off in addition to any regular sales or promotions. And one quick tip, this video was released to time nicely with the Black Friday deals, so look out for some substantial savings. All in all, the Hay Gears Reflex RS feels like a very polished and well-executed printer. They've taken their time here to produce something substantial that removes the typical guesswork and worries associated with resin printing and to replace these with ease and reliability. Sure, there's a cost involved in paying for quality and not everyone has the pockets for that, but some people do, so let's not begrudge them the opportunity. So in short, if you want a printer that needs regular adjustments, requires you to patiently tune in resin, and needs you to master a slicing software, then do not buy this printer. But if you're looking for a polished, reliable product that's stupidly easy to use and produces great looking prints, then I think you may well have found it right here. And that's it for this review, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. So take care, and thanks for watching.